2009, mm-hmm. Time Magazine, they add you as one of the 100 most influential people in the world. Mm-hmm. Not one of the most influential African-American people in the world, not as one of the most influential people in America, in the world. So I got to ask you, what do you do when you get honors like this and your life exceeds your dreams? Because this, coming from where you came from, did you even dream that mm. one day I could be on a list with 99 other people mm. who are considered the most influential people on planet Earth? Yeah. Well, the short answer is it makes you one of two things. And I believe that what it really does is pushes you further or deeper in the direction of who you already are. People, fun- people fundamentally don't change in that way. You are who you are. And so if you were arrogant <laughs> before you were on the Time 100, if you were arrogant before your star on the Walk of Fame, I've been blessed to have that. If you were arrogant before 20 honorary doctorate degrees, which I have, if you were arrogant before that, you're going to be more arrogant after that. Um, but my mother taught me as a child, um, before honor comes humility. Um, mm. She sat me down one day, literally in the kitchen, at the kitchen table, I'll never forget, and she made me read this Bible verse. And the Bible verse essentially says, let another man praise thee and not thine own mouth. Let another man exalt thee and not thine own lips. So let others exalt you. Let others praise you. You ain't got to do it for yourself. And if your stuff is that tight, it's going to come anyway. If your stuff is that cold, the love is coming your way anyway. So spend your time trying to be the best uh, of whatever you are. Dr. King put it this way. Uh, that if it falls your lot in life to be a street sweeper, you sweep the streets like Michelangelo painted pictures. Sweep the streets like Shakespeare wrote poetry. Sweep the streets um, so well that when you die, all the host of heaven will have to pause and say, here live the world's greatest street sweeper. Whatever you do in life, King said, you should do your work so well that the dead the living or the unborn couldn't do it any better. That's a tall order, brother, to do your yes, work sir. so well that the dead, the living or the unborn couldn't do it any better. That's what King told us to do. So I focus on doing the work. If you do the work, the accolades will come. And again, if you're already arrogant, you're going to be more arrogant. But if you're trying to live a life of humility, it just makes you more humble. So when the time honor comes or the star on the walk of fame or the honorary degrees or all the other stuff, that I've been blessed to uh, achieve or uh, receive, I should say, in my career, what it does is it forces me to be more humble, more humble, more humble, because honor, um, humility rather, comes before honor. Wow, well said, well said. Um, You know, there's so many great things that have happened along your career, and we've we've discussed some of the controversial things. Uh, I, I know that you and Dr. Cornell West, mm-hmm. um, good friend of yours, yes. you guys shared a show together um, on your PR PRI program. Mm-hmm. Um, he's been another one, very outspoken about um, former President Barack Obama. Yes. How do you handle when you get uh, such harsh criticism? Because I know in particular, Steve Harvey, mm-hmm. he came out, and I, and I want to read a quote mm-hmm. from Steve. He came out and he said, Tavis Smiley and Cornell West, he called you both Uncle Toms. Mm-hmm. I was a huge fan of Cornell West, but Tavis, I seen him coming a mile away. His anger started when... He, He had his town hall meeting with President Barack Obama. Um, He couldn't come because he he was on the campaign trail and he said, Miss Obama, he's held a grudge ever since. You don't have to go as deep into uh, Barack not showing up, Mm -hmm. but I'm just wondering about the criticism, the harsh criticism, not just by regular people, but Steve Harvey, you speak about you working and having... Uh, this many jobs working like a Jamaican, that's another person mm-hmm. who has a huge platform and, and you can't turn on the TV or on the radio without hearing this man's voice or seeing his likeness. Is it difficult for you 
when you go home at night and know, damn, like, like they coming at me and, and it's not where I can ignore it. It's not just a random person putting up a post on, on Instagram or social mm -hmm. media. This is Steve Harvey and mm -hmm. he has the platform to be heard. Well, a few things right quick. One, uh, you can't ignore it. Uh, number two, how do I process it? It hurts. Uh, I, I am not human and divine. I'm just human. As I said earlier in this conversation, we all want to be loved, respected, acknowledged, and affirmed. And I'm no different. And so when people push back against you, it hurts. Um, what, I, what, I, what I do caution people against when they critique others is to make sure you got your facts right. And in that instance, with all due respect, Steve had his facts wrong. Those were not the facts of what happened. I'm not going to detour and get into that now. It's not worth the time. Yep. Um, but his facts were wrong, number one. Uh, number two, as I said earlier in this conversation, we can be, uh, we can disagree without being disagreeable. And I have very little respect for people who can't offer a critique of me without engaging in the name calling. Uh, I don't ever think it has to devolve into name calling. Um, I will say to Steve's credit, and there were people who pushed him to do this. I, I, I'm telling you not what I heard, but what I know, including some of his sponsors. Steve eventually apologized for calling Cornell West and me Uncle Tom's. So I want to give him his credit and his props for that. He did eventually apologize for calling us Uncle Tom's. And again, I don't want to act like he didn't. Uh, and I appreciate Steve uh, for apologizing for calling us Uncle Tom's. And the, and the name didn't fit anyway. If you know what Uncle Tom is, it didn't fit Cornell West to me to begin with. He could have called us another name, but that was the wrong name to call us. And I've been called many names in my life, um, but that was the wrong one. So he apologized for that. Um, but beyond that, uh, I have a First Amendment right to free speech, Sean. I do not have a First Amendment right to be liked by everybody once I use my free speech expression and utter something. So I, I'm a big boy. I take a big boy pill every morning I wake up. Uh, and I understand that throughout that day, there is something I say or there's something I may say or do that others would disagree with. People are entitled to their opinions. Again, I think it doesn't have to devolve into name calling and we ain't got to be ugly and vicious with it, but people don't have to agree with everything I say. My mama doesn't agree <laughs> with everything I say. So I am never bothered by the fact that people disagree with me. I'm not bothered by pushback. I am not afraid to have people challenge me to re-examine the assumptions that I hold. I am not afraid to have folk help me expand my inventory of ideas. I told you earlier, I don't have a monopoly on the truth. I'm always open to seeing a deeper, greater, uh, more significant truth. I'm humble enough in that regard. So I, I, I don't, I don't, uh, I, I don't have a problem with people disagreeing with me. Uh, I think there's a way to do that. And I try to treat others with the same level of respect. I critique Barack Obama. I critique Joe Biden, all kinds of people. Uh, that's my job to raise these issues and to give you my take on it. But I try to always be respectful in the process of doing that. Finally, let me say this. Uh, at the end of the day, I don't spend a lot of time paying attention to it. The more time I spend listening to detractors is the less time I have to work on my project. So mm -hmm. I don't waste time reading uh, commenting. You can't find anywhere in the media where I'm on Twitter or any place else responding to haters. I just don't do it. I, I mm -hmm. don't, I don't, I don't have the time for it because I'm too busy in the laboratory trying to give them something else to hate about me. That's what I'm working on. Giving you something, <laughs> something else to hate on, but I ain't got time to be bothered with you and your comments because it distracts me. Uh, it detracts me from the work that I need to be doing. I'm here for a reason. I've got a calling. I've got a vocation. I've got a work and a witness that I'm going to be held accountable to. And at some point when I die, which I hope is no time soon, but we all going to eventually do that dance with mortality. Every one of us is going to do that dance one day. When I get to my maker and he asked me, what did you do with the gift, the skill and the talent that I put in you? I want to be thoroughly used up. My report, I want to be that I used every ounce of everything you gave me to try to leave Ooh. the world better than when I found it. I want to be thoroughly used up and I don't have time to waste dealing with haters and dealing with detractors. And so I don't focus on it. Understood. Well said. Well said. 